We moved to Shaolin Land. What's going on? First things first, um, let's put our hands together and just thank Max for having this great event. All right, all right. So who was here for the questions after dark yesterday? All right, thank you for coming. And if you was here, right, um, is a young lady from Chicago that spoke, is she here? Can you stand up? And the gentleman from Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky, I think his name was Mark, he was on stage yesterday morning. Is he in here? Hey, stand up. Okay, so yesterday we were in here and um, the young lady, she shared a very emotional story. And I left probably, it was like two hours left, right? And I tried to sneak out the side door, right? <laughs> but my boss, Max, he called me out. He said, yo, where you going? I'm going to the bathroom. He said, why you got your book bag? <laughs> Just blew up my whole spot, right? Couldn't even sneak out the side door. However, I'm getting older now. It's not, you know, my early YouTube videos. Um, you know, not the uh, sexy guy that had the long dreads anymore. You know, brother getting older. And my eyes don't work like they used to. Back in my 20s, I used to go see the police like 60 feet behind me. You know what I'm saying? And now I got to wear these prescription joints. However, I don't like to drive at like too late because in cities I'm not familiar with. Whereas back in the day, I used to come down here and it was party time. Well, I used to be in that velvet room shaking my tail feather. But anyway, y'all can too continue to stand up. Anyway, I wanted to go to the store and do something for you guys. And what I did was I picked you up a um, $100 gift card and a $100 gift card for you. What I want you to do is I want you to use this to buy um, Skip Trace data from REI Skip to give you a head start in getting your first deal. The reason why I'm here, I'm here to serve you guys, right? You. you know, I'm not here in Atlanta so I can go eat at Slutty Vegan. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 let's get together after. Okay, I'm not here if I go eat that good cheeseburger I had the other night from Slutty Vegan. I'm not here so I can go down to Busy Bee and get some of that good soul food. I'm not here, all right, all right, I know, I'm terrible, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm not here so I can go down to Dave's Philly and Cheese Steak and get that good cheese steak with some of that sauce on that joint. I'm here to serve y'all, okay? That's why Max brought me here, to, to serve, so I just got to make an impact. Today, right, what I want to talk about, you, of, of course, you know, majority of the speakers up here, we all have seven-figure um, businesses, but this particular niche is something that we need to do and we need to do more of it, which is you know, working with banks so that we can keep more of our properties. So this is my uh, presentation, and most of you heard of the Burr strategy. And the Burr is a, a, a term that was coined out um, a few years ago on uh, Bigger Pockets, and that's buy, rehab, rent, and refinance, right? So when I got started, I didn't know this information, and it seems like people were not people who knew this information just weren't freely sharing it. And this is a technique, and maybe you have not done your first deal, but believe me, with this information, you're gonna use it one day, okay? And my name is Nasser El Arabi, as they, you know, introduced me. So let's uh, get this thing started. All right, so who is this guy that's standing up here, talking to you, giving you information, right? I've been involved in real estate for 13 years. Learned about creative real estate in 2010, did my first wholesale deal in 2011. And I was fired from my job in 2012. Um, I have a bachelor's degree, King University in Jersey, and that's where I'm from, from Elizabeth, New Jersey. All right, all right, all right. From Jersey, and um, shout out to the Carolinas. So, I mean, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right. Okay, okay, all right, all right. 
So um, I was fired in, um, from my job. I was making uh, $38,000. That was the most money I ever made in my life, right? And um, with my degree, so I was making about 38K. And fortunately, I was doing deals before I got fired. Um, if any of you know me, um, I, well, you probably don't, so I'm gonna just tell you. I pretty much suck as an employee. You see, I snuck out of my boss yesterday, right? <laughs> so I suck as an employee, you know. I, I don't know what you guys did it, type of stuff you guys did at your job, but I did some dumb stuff. Like, I remember one time at this particular job, they fired me. I printed out a whole real estate ebook. <laughs> because I figured, like, there's no real victim. You know what I'm saying? There's no real victim. So I got caught, called my boss in California, whatever, you know, brought me in the principal office like I was 12 and gave me a talking to. I don't even know how I got caught. I probably, I, I, I probably did it during the most busiest time because I ain't pay attention, you know what I'm saying? And I got fired from some nice places too. You know what I'm saying? I got fired from some real, matter of, oh yeah, all Fortune 500 joints. Yeah, I got fired from some great places, man. You know what I mean? I got, yeah, yeah, real talk, man. So, um, yeah, yeah, they used to kick me out, bro. I swear, man, they ain't let me stay. But anyway, so last year, um, well, not 19. This is my um, previous numbers, but it was a little more than that. But um, we did, I, I, do, I did 1.3, right? Okay, did 1.3, okay? So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I graduated from high school with a 1.8 GPA, all right? I was that guy who went to school, who got dressed up. I was real cool. I was the class clown. And I stayed in the hallway to make sure y'all got to class first, right? <laughs> and the reason why I did that was because um, I had to make sure y'all seen my outfit. I was fresh. So, and people, and some of my boys be like, man, you love school, you always here. Everybody else here. Where else you gonna go? Because it didn't make sense to drop out. And I grew up in the 90s, so I grew up in that era when your parents can beat you. So, bro, my father, if he had caught me, like, out of school hours hanging out, Bro, my father would embarrass me in front of my little friends, and I knew that. So I knew it's better to act up in school because he ain't gonna be in school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, I would go to school, you know what I mean, and not do a lot, you know? Just sit there and uh, joke, make sure everybody else. I didn't want to go to college because my mother instilled that into me, right? Um, she went to uh, North Carolina uh, Central. She went to Central, she's an uh, a Eagle, so yeah, Eagle. And um, yeah, shout out to the HBCUs, so she went out there. All right, all right, all right. And um, I tried to use her name. My mom passed in 97 when I was 14, but I tried to use her name on the application. Cause somebody's like, yo, put her name on the application because the person who the dean, they could've went to school together and they could do that. Yo, that ain't work for me. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, my SAT score was like, um, Back in my day, I think the highest was like a 1,200, 1,300, right? So my SAT score was, I want to say like a, you need like an 800 to get in. A 2.5 and an 800 pretty much got you in here, right? So I think, I want to say I was like a 650 or 7 something, right? So I didn't know it was bad because all my friends was dumb. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I ain't know it was bad. So I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? We, they was giving me the vouchers to apply for college. You know, everybody's telling me no, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, you know what I mean? And um, my, my, my guy's counselor, she wasn't really direct. She was a real nice lady. So she was like, yeah, you know what? I, I you might need to take it again. So I took it again, right? So instead of getting like a 650, I got like a 660. Went up 10 points. So yeah, 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 man. It was hard to cheat. So <laughs> yeah. Terrible. So um, I couldn't do that. So my score wasn't good. And I, my father just put this mentality to never quit, right? Never quit. I remember when I was in like the fourth grade and I, uh, grade school, I broke my arm. 
and playing football, organized football, and I didn't want to play anymore. But he just, they, they made me go to practice. My parents made me go to practice, made me participate and all that. He always instilled this never quit mentality. So I just was applying to schools, applying to schools, and finally somebody told me yes because they was desperate for some money. And I went out there for a semester out in Ohio, Wilberforce University out in Ohio. I did a semester out there. Yeah, and I ain't like it. It was in the cornfields. I'm a, I'm a city boy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember watching Max videos. I'm like, why does this guy got a cowboy hat on, man? What in the yippee, yippee, yay, he got going on. So, yeah, I'm a city boy. So I grew up in the city, um, you know, rough and tough with my Afro puffs, you know what I'm saying? So I grew up in that area. So um, with that being said, you know, grew up in the city and um, I didn't like it came back home. I remember looking at my GPA in college for one school I went back home. It, yo, my joint was like 0.6. All I did was eat and work out, son. You know what I mean? Eat and work out and sleep. Got to get that sleep in. You know, you need that eight. So, yeah, it's terrible. So um, anyway, it took me like four schools and I graduated from college. I do have my, my bachelor's degree. You know what I mean? I have my bachelor's degree. Woo! Yes. Thank God I graduated before turnitin.com, because I'd have been screwed. All right, I have over 100 uh, videos on YouTube. Um, I just started updating stuff in 2019. You can find me down there, the real estate guru. Some of you know my slogan. I'm the real estate guru, because I'm not your guru, because I'm the guru, because I actually do this business. Some of you know that and heard that before. So great. All right, let's hop into it, right? Why should you burn? Why should you do this, right? What's the point of this? And for one, with real estate, what happens is inflation. With some of you don't know, and I'm, I'm mid-30, so with some of you don't know, um, you younger people, what, what happens is things become a little bit more expensive. Like your parents can tell you when gas was 99 cent a gallon, right? And as, as the world goes on, we just have inflation, just things go up. But the big issue is salaries don't keep up with inflation at all. Typical at all the jobs I worked at, um, raises typically was between one and six percent a year. Okay, so if you're made, if I was making forty thousand dollars in um, thirty-eight thousand in two thousand twelve, and let's say I got one percent a year, I possibly I can't do math, so don't clown me. About 44, 40, 44 thousand a year, whatever the case may be, which probably get eaten up in taxes, and I wouldn't even see the difference in my check, right? But with real estate, in this house in particular, I bought this house in 2009. This was a rental war zone. I didn't know anything about it. I'm from New Jersey, and I grew up, and we were middle class, but the cost of living is so high in Jersey, you could be middle class and still be in the hood. So, yeah, I was in the hood. So, uh, with that being said, when I came down south to Charlotte and I seen in Jersey is one of those places when you know you in the hood, like you didn't hood, you know you in the hood. Like ain't no confusion. And when I came down here, right, it was different. I came in the daytime and I'm like, whoa, this is pretty nice. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I, I guess down here, you know, 10, 11 a.m., you know, people, they probably were still sleeping so they didn't want to sell no drugs or kill people at that time, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> With that being said, came to find out that it was a terrible area. I mean, every time I went around there, it was like um, a new rest in peace memorial for somebody. And I'm like, bro, this is crazy. I could not. And then I would tell other people where I owned the neighborhood I owned a house. They said, you did what? Holy sh hoo -hoo -hoo. So I just thought I was stuck with it forever. Um, had a good tenant in there. My mortgage was like, paid like $77.5. Mortgage was $600, rented out for $800, right? And one thing with my rentals, and if I can get somebody in that market, I don't increase the rate. Um, I like to keep them there because I don't want them to stay because turnover can run you, you know, three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, and you're increasing rent to make an extra, 600 or 800 a year is not worth it, you know, as far as it take you years to recoup, you know, the turnover. So I just kept the rent the same. And she started out on Section 8. And by the time she moved out, she was buying her own house. 
So yeah, that was great. So I said, man, the market is hot. I wonder what's going on. I went to the front of the neighborhood and they were building new houses and the process of gentrification was starting. I'm like, man, I can get out, get out of this loan or whatever. And um, 2018, I sold that for 187, 500. I walked away with clothes of like a check of 100,000 after doing like a $20,000 rehab. You know, it wasn't easy, but well worth it. And another reason besides the inflation of the equity that went up, taxes, you get your, you know, your benefit on saving you money on your taxes, and you also get um, the passive income. So this is why you should do this. All of the techniques discussed at this event will help you find great deals. So everything we learn will help you find great deals. And it's good to wholesale those deals, we get in these big checks, but try to keep one or two a year. You know, at least try to keep one or two a year and you know, just as a long-term rental strategy. And you know, um, but we always remember, we buy on sale, not for sale. Okay, unless the return is, has a great potential and you know, has some great potential. So for example, it's a neighborhood in Charlotte I knew was really close to downtown. And I paid, at the time it was worth $45,000, probably rented for like $700 at the time. And I paid $45,000, right? And you know, the owner financed it for me. So I was good with that. Now that house as is, is probably worth three times as much as is. You know, so I knew that because it was close to downtown and I knew the path of progress was coming up. It was only gonna take a little bit of time. Me, when I buy something, I like to budget 10 years and um, I try to hold it for at least 10 years, but with this particular rental I'm talking about, it happened way faster than 10 years with the path of progress because, you know, people are paying for convenience these days. It's all about convenience. We want to be close to town because that's where the jobs are, that's where you know the nightlife is and the entertainment, et cetera. Ideally for each rental, it's smart to have at least five thousand dollars reserved for each rental. You know, it's not the sexy business. That's why a lot of people don't talk about it, because it's not sexy, but it can pay off very well if done right. All right, so the most important step is going to be to find a good bookkeeper. It took me years to go through this, man. I hired a few cheap bookkeepers, one after the other. I did not know what they were doing, nor did I know what to manage because I didn't know anything about it, so I didn't know how to manage them. I just would take their word that they do it. And some of you um, I have personal relationships with, and um, you know I'm cheap. I'm cheap. I mean, I'm that guy. So I would just hire Somebody say, yeah, I do it for $9 an hour. Hire. I wouldn't even do the talk. $9. Woo. So let's go. So then I found a decent bookkeeper. At least I thought she was decent. She charged me $100, $125 per month, but she handed off my books to her employee. And her employee quit. My stuff got, my stuff got messed up and you know, I, I, I didn't know, so I started, stayed with her, and the employee did not do my books well at all, and it was terrible. And if your books are bad, then your taxes are not accurate, and your banking ability is affected, right? So you can't get money from the banks if, you're, if it's on paper that you're losing money um, in your company um, because your books are not done right. If your books are sloppy, because sometimes some banks want to see those, if that's sloppy, then... It, they'll deny you for loans. Now, I found another local bookkeeper via Google by searching best bookkeepers in Charlotte. She did a lot of cleanup because the other person didn't. She had to go back like two years or so. I was working with them and did a lot of cleanup and get my stuff ready. Um, some, some bank accounts I had, they didn't even add them. Like they didn't even have them in my books. It was, it was terrible. Everything was great until her employee quit. Now, I went through this already. So my book sat for a month. So now I knew I gotta be more proactive. And I reached out to another investor expressing my frustration and he recommended reibookkeepers.com. These people are wonderful. Um, reibookkeepers.com, that's, and they're investors themselves. So they, they know all our terms. They understand earnest money, due diligence. Um, this is a wholesale, this is a flip. 
um, they understand all that, and they re and they they they'll educate you on what you should keep and what you shouldn't keep. And all the records, we share folders. You get a dedicated email. It's 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 great. When I say a dedicated email, an email that you will send in receipts and things like that. And so yeah, it, they they were great. And um, the service is like no other, you know. And my and we text if you need them. They'll hop on a call and explain something, walk you through QuickBooks, etc. My, my, and my bookkeeper not only sends monthly reports, but they explain what's going on. So, um, and they are very detailed, you know, very detailed people. I love them. So REI bookkeepers, now let me say it's not cheap. If you're not running a six-figure business, making at least 100000 a year, maybe you don't need this. This is not a need. This is something if you're ready to step your game up, go to the next level, and you say, hey, look, I want to be presentable because... You know, being I want to be presentable to banks because I want to step into the next level, get cheap money, go into uh, multifamily, et cetera. So before getting the property, you want to find the bank. The first step is find the bank to do the birth strategy prior to having a house. Ideally, you want to look for small local banks, small local banks. Major banks like your um, Bank of America, your Wells Fargo's do not have an appetite for these type of deals. I swear, one time, one year, I made about a quarter million dollars, right? One, I'm sorry, a quarter million dollars or 150, uh, 250 in like a, a, a quarter. I think it was like 150 or whatever a few years back. So I walk into Bank of America. They offer me like a, a unsecured line, right? A unsecured credit line. I was like, right, yeah, give me unsecured for like 100,000. That was the max or whatever. Cause, and he offered it. And he was taking my application. He was like, wait, man, they, they accept your application. I've never seen anybody make it this far. You might have a chance. So I'm like, yeah, of course I got a chance. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm personal. I'm like a, a 700 plus, you know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, I got this. So they end up denying me. And I'm like, what? I got to deny me. Bro, I know Max Maxwell. You don't deny nobody who know no damn Max Maxwell. But they deny me. And just so happened, I was at an event and I spoke to somebody in the com commercial department. And they told me, um, they basically explained to me, they was like, yeah, Bank of America's ideal client is uh, five mil a year. It was a girl, uh, she was, then she told me a story, it was a girl out of Winston-Salem, and they were um, easily making three, five hundred thousand a year selling hair. For those who are not familiar, hair extensions that uh, people wear these days, you know, to have your joint bouncing and looking good, you be in the club, your joint like you in the video, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Right. So they, they started out in Winston-Salem. The operation got too big and they moved down to Atlanta. And she said one of the conversations was the people was having in the back office was, yo, I got this application for hair, but does hair have a shelf life? Does it expire? I don't know, you know? So I'm, I'm going to just deny it. And they denied that loan because the person didn't, have, didn't know anything about the hair business or they didn't know if it has a shelf life, if she, they, they get all this inventory, like, can the hair expire? They, they just didn't know. And the bigger banks, there's no relationship. You don't even get to talk to that person to explain to them your business model. So with the smaller banks, the way I break it down, I call the smaller banks in my area. The way I break it down is, um, hey, I want to refinance some properties in my LLC. And they say, okay, talk to our loan officer. And loan officer say, yeah, I can get you in an FHA or um, conventional. You say, nah, that's not what I'm looking for, but thank you. The reason why you don't want the, the big banks that um, deal with Fetty and Franny, that, that sell their loans to Fetty and Franny, you can't put those in the LLC. Those, you have to sign for those personally. So you want small banks. So you got to break it down as easy as possible. It takes patience, all right? And when I say it takes patience, it's like, hey, look, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a loan, right? I'm trying to refinance in my LLC, and I'm going to be the personal guarantee. Um, and with these particular loans, they don't show up on your personal credit unless you don't pay. But they don't show up on your personal credit. So if I, um, my boy TJ in Charlotte, shout out to Charlotte, um, if I went, he used to sell cars, but if I went to the car business and they pulled my credit, they wouldn't see it wouldn't affect my debt to income because this is my LLC. They wouldn't see that loan unless I didn't pay it. Um, all right, 
So you want to pay. Now, with these loans, they're doing the LLC. So they're taking us a, uh, a risk. So you're not going to get market rates. You're going to pay a little bit higher. Might be a percent or two higher. However, just remember your end goal. And ask about fees for the loan product. You decide to use like, hey, what fees are in there? You just want to make sure it's not a lot of junk fees. What you're going to find, these internet companies, they have a lot of fees in there. The local banks, they're not too crazy. And they're going to be on a 15-year amortization schedule. Um, and when I say a 15-year am, what that is is um, when you go live in your personal residence, they do a 30-year amortization schedule. And they spread out the payments for 30 years. These banks typically spread them out for 15 years. Okay? One of the most important questions you want to ask them, how, ask them how long do they require for you to be on title before you're eligible for a refinance that you can take money out? Because let's say if you're working, like me, I leverage um, private money, but let's say you're working uh, $50,000. Let's say you live in a city where you can still get out for $50,000, which I, most major cities you can't anymore. Those days long and gone. Yeah, I remember back in Atlanta, I used to see this stuff floating all over the internet for 20, 30, 40. Now neighborhoods is 300, 400. Same thing in Charlotte. You know, um, inflation is real. So with that being said, you want to ask them, how long do I need to be on title, right? Some people, um, some, I met guys who said they have, um, their banks require 30 days, 60 days. Um, and my local bank I use requires 12 months for me to be on title before I'm eligible for a cash out refinance. You can refinance, refinance prior, but to do a cash out, you have to be 12 months. And if you have your $50,000 parked there in the house, you probably want it back because you can just rinse and repeat and do this. That's why it's the birth strategy, so you can build wealth over time. So you want to ask them that. If you use a loan broker, have them call underwriter to inquire about title season. So somebody say, hey, I broke loans. Yeah, we got investor programs. Just say, hey, yo, um, can you please call underwriting to make sure and just ask them, how long do I need to be on title before I'm eligible to, uh, for this um, refinance, to cash out refinance? Because I, I had a guy, I paid for an appraisal, because I, I told him that I've been on title for less than a year. He said, no, nah, I can do it, pay for the appraisal, and then came back, underwrite, and said, oh, he, I need, we need him at least on title for 12 months. So, and he couldn't do it. Fortunately, this guy was a stand-up guy, and he got me a refund on the uh, appraisal. But most people just stop answering their phone. So keep that in mind. Now, what to expect? What to expect the banks to require from you? You want something, you got to give them something, right? Nobody wants to, you wouldn't loan money to somebody who constantly loses money. So same thing with them. They usually want to see two-year tax returns. And some might ask for your profit and loss statements, but they want to see two years tax returns. One, one bank even asked me to, to, to go into the branch. You know, so I, I dressed up to look like a respectable human being. You know what I mean? <laughs> Looking like I, I, you know, just look like I don't listen to Wu-Tang Clan or nothing like that. And I spoke in my job interview voice. Yes, I am here for that, that loan. <laughs> you do loans? You're not going to believe it. I got some property around the corner you can loan on. And I still ain't get it. <laughs> still ain't get the loan. Yeah. All right. And, and, and if they give you the loan, most of them are going to say, the local banks are going to say, all right, well, just give us a deposit account. So just open up an account. You can put $100 in there. You can put more in there, et cetera. You know, just, they're just going to ask you that. And most banks are going to loan around 70 to 80% of value. Somewhere between that of value. So if a house is worth 100,000, they'll let you, um, they'll go up to 70. Uh, they do 80%, they'll go up to 80. All right, so the small banks that do these loans uh, locally. I use People's Bank, that's my guy. The People's Bank, I, I like them. They're in, they're in North Carolina, it's a local bank. So most of you guys state, they're probably not gonna be there. Now, um, the rest, the other three companies are internet-based companies, so they do have um, more fees that's gonna get rolled into that loan or pay that closing, so just keep that in mind. However, they do most states. But this is just a starter, all right? This is just a starter for you guys so that you can start the process and you know make phone calls, compare and save, because you want to have the financing in place beforehand. So you're gonna ask them, hey, how long do I need to be on title? What fees do I have to pay up front for this loan? 
All right, are you okay with me doing a cash out refinance? All right, now, and this is gonna be in my LLC and I gotta sign the personal guarantee, correct? You know, you just wanna ask them a question, but these, uh, the last three companies, um, they do that and you can call them around, etc. Now, I got some time left, so now I'm about to just freestyle, so you about to have some fun. You know what I'm saying? I hope that was useful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. And um, yeah, you see my boss, Max, so he my boss, I'm on his payroll this weekend. Just, you know, say, man, that Nasa guy was good. Where'd you get it from? Man, you gotta bring him back. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. My first real estate event, 2012, right? I just got fired. And I, um, I got fired and talked to my boy in Charlotte. He um, builds my houses for me. If you've seen my new construction stuff on Max channel, um, he's my GC. He only builds for me and himself. Um, and what happened was when I got fired, it was a real, it was at that time in 2012, it wasn't many real estate podcasters around, right? It's not like it was now where you have thousands on the, you know. So it was this guy by the name of Sean Terry. Um, and uh, me and Dwayne met before, prior to Terry, but we actually, you know, met at his events a few times, have a good relationship. All right, but in 2012, I had to make a risk, right? I was saying, because this was Sean's second event, I said to myself, yo, um, I can't keep saying next year I'm gonna go. It's even now or never, my back against the wall. I don't have no choice, I gotta make it happen. So me and my boy um, uh, from Horner Homes, uh, who builds my houses, we went out there, we shared the room, pause, and um, <laughs> yeah, so we, sh we shared the room, and um, it, was, it, it was double best, double best, <laughs> double best. Don't, bruh, double. It was a bed over here, the other bed was over there. So y'all need the big room, separate. Curtain in between. So, yeah, we shared the, we, we shared the, you know, shared the room, split the cost, because not only at that time, I wasn't, I was cheap at that time, but I was also poor. So if any of you know that, you, you really got to count your coins. So, um, and, I went there and it was life changing. And as soon as I, as soon as I seen Sean, I said, yo, I want to be in the hot seat, bro. He's like, yeah, I got you, man. He put me in the hot seat, he started telling me, and I started telling my life, I was telling about my life. And he's like, yo, I just, said, yo, I just got fired. He said, congratulations, this is great. So we started talking, he gave me some information to, uh, for my business and it helped me and it, and it took off. And what we did, right, and this is what I want you guys to do. I'm telling you the story for a reason. Some of the people, because this is, it was small. It was probably like 50 people, 30, 50 people at that first event. Small room out there in Dallas, Texas. Shout out to Dallas. And um, yeah, it was a small, small room. And we would have lunch together. We got together. We didn't, like they said last night, we didn't bombard the speakers or anything like that. And this one dude, he came up with an idea. He said, look, we got to stay in contact. We got to hold each other accountable. We got to make this thing happen. So we're like, yeah, you know, and at the time I was still doing deals, maybe like one, you know, some one, you know, every month or so, or every other month. So I was doing deals. Um, so the dude came up with the idea. He said, this is what we're going to do. This before group chat texting, um, group texting, you know what I'm saying? He was like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start a, a Facebook group. Uh, I believe it was. It was a Facebook group. And we're going to do a conference call. All right, so we did a conference call, and it was just all of us, and every, he was like, yo, look, we're gonna do Sunday. Sunday good for everybody, Sunday good for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did it on Sunday. That Sunday came, right? Uh, we started off about, it's gonna be like maybe eight or 10 of us. That Sunday came, the guy who came up with the idea and was motivated to do it said, I can't do it because I got to uh, spend time with my girlfriend. I said, what? <laughs> do you not know if we do this, you and your girlfriend will be out there in Fiji? <laughs> Man, drinking water named Fiji? No, 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 no. We're going to go to Fiji. We're going to get the water direct. 
He never got on the phone call. Never got on the phone call. So I took over, ran the phone calls, made everything work. And I want to say maybe out of, let's say if it was seven people that were active on that call, um, it's probably about four of us in, still in the business. Probably about four of us still in the business doing it full time or so. But I tell you that story because like Max said earlier, or I'm sorry, the motivational speaker said earlier, is look, just because you paid does not mean they're serious, right? You have to be serious about your future. There were some things that we've been, a lot of us been blessed to do that um, a job would just would not provide. Because like Mr. Robbins said, they're not gonna pay you, you know, an, um, to enough to be their, um, their neighbor. However, they're gonna pay you so that you can keep coming back and you need them to come back. And majority of people, what do they do? As soon as they get a raise, they go get that new car, they go get that new payment, you know? And now they put themselves deeper in the rat race. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to, you know, say, look, we're going to do a group test. We're going to hold each other accountable. We'll hop on the call once a week. Um, we'll try to once a month, two times a month, and just talk about what you're going to do this week, right? You talk about what you're going to do this week, and then the next week you talk about what you got done, et cetera, and you just keep, keep it on. And you guys can do it because some of you guys, like I started off in the crowd, Max started off in the crowd, y'all gonna be up here teaching us. So many people that have crazy businesses that say, hey, I used to watch this stuff on YouTube. And they're making way more than me. Why? Because they stuck with it and they were serious about it. And some of y'all are gonna be the next leaders. Some of you might say, yo, I don't wanna be a next leader. However, I just want to, um, you know, get my family, fi fi be financially free. Don't think you have to be on the stage to make millions. Man, it's many of investors who make crazy amounts of money and you will never know who they are. And that business can do this for you. But you have to be serious about the business. You know, you paid all this money, you have to invest in yourself. That can't be like me sneaking out the side door. When, that, when, when Max is doing some bonus stuff, you got to stay here. You got to ask those questions. You know, I, I, I know in our lives it's just hard, man. And I'm just like you. I was talking to my boy right here, Anthony. Hey, raise your hand, bro. Hey, yo, bro, shout out to South Carolina, man. Yeah, man, I was telling him back. I'm telling him a story, man, and um, about how back in the day I visited Charlotte back in like 06, 06 07. I moved down to 08. And I had met this girl, she um, down in Charlotte, she lived in Spartanburg, and I went to go see her in Spartanburg. I was young and dumb, and I didn't know what I was getting into, so whatever. <laughs> bro, she had me all in the projects that day, bro. <laughs> all in the projects, bro. Just so happened, yo, he knows one of the pe first people I meet, met, he knows the person we was talking, we was laughing about it, but it's just crazy, even though we grew up in different states, we grew up in similar uh, environments and has the same challenges. So I say I have to say, I'm just like you guys. Like, I never had straight A's. That's just not me. I just wasn't that guy, you know? I, I never got accepted to Princeton. I didn't even try, because I didn't want to disrespect them. <laughs> but my number one choice in the kid, my dream school was Florida State. But I didn't have no Florida State talent. I rode the bench in high school, but I had support. My, my father supported me, I had love, so I was okay. My number one choice was Morgan State. I wanted to go to Morgan State. The reason why I wanted to go to Morgan State because um, the founder of Black Enterprise, I used to read that magazine religiously, even, even my days when I didn't read. And uh, I used to just hang out in the hood and we just had fun all day. I used to read that book. And my man, he was like, yo, bro, you, what's these black man books you read, bro? You the only person I know read them. You know, you want to be rich one day, bro. Nah, 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 it was just me and him. So he was like, yo, bro, you want to be a millionaire, bro? You be reading black man books. What is this, man? <laughs> I said, yo, black enterprise. It just highlights itself. I'm trying, I'm black man books, man. <laughs> so unfortunately, you know, as cool as he was, you know, he died in the streets when we were young. 
But I say I had to say, my background is just like y'all's. It was rough. Got y'all, y'all thought I was crying. Y'all thought I was crying. I got y'all. I'm Will Smith with it. I fooled y'all. Those were jokes. I was just playing. But anyway, my background is just like y'all's. I grew up in a rough environment. Really rough. I wouldn't recommend you doing it. Living there. It was, people just wanted to fight for no reason. So, where I'm going is, don't think because you had some challenges, somebody said you were stupid, somebody said you was dumb, you, you got counted out. Now we have an opportunity to just bet on yourself. And that's what you have to do. You have to bet on yourself. You paid this money. So I know you believe in yourself. Now you just got to go out and make it happen. That's my time. Thank you.